Hey there everybody, it's Nathan Cool with Surfer Magazine and I wanted to give you an update on what's going to be happening over the next few weeks. If you might recall from some of my recent reports I've been talking about a pattern shift in the northern Pacific and that has a lot that's going to be influencing our weather, going to be influencing our surf for the near term and of course we're getting close to spring which is a time of waiting uh, usually before we get into the southern hemisphere season for swells coming from that area and also from what could be coming from the tropics. We've got a pretty good idea now of what to expect now that we're into March and we can see this pattern change also happening in the North Pacific. More though is going on especially with what's happening with La Nina right now and what that means for swells during our southern hemisphere swell season in California. Ready to take a look? This is what's going on right now. So this is how things were looking. Uh, this is a model from uh, eh, just a few weeks ago. This is the North Pole up here in the center. The area of interest right here is this big area off here to the left. And what we've got, if you look, this is Baja down here. And then this would be the Western uh, Pacific and the Aleutians, that's up in this area. And what we have here is this big dominant area of high pressure. And that's been spinning clockwise around that region. And uh, what that's done, this is very typical of a La Nina is as storms would come out of the western Pacific like this guy right here that would get spun up and go into Alaska and then eventually get driven down the west coast of the, the United States it could bring some wind swell, maybe a little bit of rain, but it really results in a much drier season for rain because we don't have the storm track bringing those storms right across the Pacific. So, and the same thing goes for swells too because we need to have those storms coming out of the Western Pacific gain a lot of strength as they move across the Pacific and start to send a swell. So that's starting to change now, so let's take a look. This is kind of more the pattern that we're starting to see. This is a relative vorticity and all that that really means is low pressure is red and high pressure is blue. Think of it that way. So here we are. This is the west coast of the U.S. You can see this big area of low pressure that's set up shop down here. This is from a pattern shift that's now moved that high pressure over into the western Pacific. So instead of having high pressure blocking in the Gulf of Alaska, it's now in the western Pacific. That's good and bad news. Let's first just take a look and move those models forward in time. And as we do, we can see that that starts churning and bringing some stuff our way in the way of vorticity and also that it could mean then weather that would start heading our way by the end of the week and rain is on the way. But as we move that more forward in time you can see something else that happens. Another storm drops down from the Arctic, it crosses the Bering Sea, comes down into the Gulf of Alaska. So there's no blocking high pressure to stop that type of storm from coming down. Now this type of a storm will generate surf for California but the jet stream right now is guiding that if we take a look once again at its motion it goes more to the south a little bit to the west we want it though to be coming more at us like about this type of progression this would be good it can bring weather our way it can also generate a lot more surf as well so the jet stream is what's really influencing this and we can see right now taking a look at the jet it's starting to fall apart now this is very typical as we start getting into spring for the northern hemisphere but as we move the models forward in time we can see two things happen one we've got that high pressure displacement over here in the western pacific this low pressure dominance then over here in the gulf allows the jet stream to guide those storms south but we want them to go also southeast. We want them to send stuff to the west coast. There's also another leg of the jet stream coming up here, and that's then a storm track that could go help guide some rain into our region, which I'll get to shortly. So as we move that more forward in time, we can see then where that big monster would start coming down. And this is all influencing swell that we would then see in around the 13th, 14th of the month in Southern California. So as far as the weather is concerned, this is a neat thing we can see here uh, some a little bit of uh, rain activity that might start approaching the coast on Friday. Move that more forward in time. And you can see that there's a good possibility of getting rain. This would be early Sunday morning. Um, it would start falling probably on Saturday night. And I've got all the details on the exact timing, some of the amounts and all that on my report at uh, forecasts.surfer.com. Look up uh, California and you'll see my reports there. But anyways, we can see that there's that potential of rain coming our way. Good amount of it too that would start arriving once again Saturday night into Sunday morning and then start fading off. And there's a lot more than that could start influencing us. And I want to show a little bit bigger picture of why that's going on but also why it's very precarious. 
So now if we looked at the greater picture of the North Pacific, we can see this is California and over here, Western Pacific. We can see this tropical plume that's down in this area just east of Hawaii, and it's being brought up into that dominant low pressure system that we saw that was forming earlier when we took a look at that pattern shift. As we start moving the models forward in time on that, we can see that nice swirling counterclockwise motion start to tap into that, but it really doesn't hold together and it falls apart rather quickly. But a little few strands of that come in, and this would then be something that could hit Santa Barbara possibly then on Friday. But as we move those models forward more in time, the idea is that a larger area of low pressure would start descending across. This is one that could then bring swell by the, uh, by the 13th, 14th when it would finally generate wind and then of course surf. But the idea is, is that that low pressure would start swirling in another blob of moisture and it's that blob of moisture that could then bring a lot of rain to uh, Southern California as you can see here. So that's a real precarious forecast because it's relying on just this one little blob of moisture breaking free from a very sporadic um, atmospheric river pattern from that tropical plume down there. But that's what's starting to influence. After that goes off though, then we can start seeing the pattern shifting a little bit more toward a typical uh, winter or springtime rain event for California. Dominant low pressure starts to move down as we've seen in some of the other models because of that pattern shift. And then of course some of that could then progress southward into Southern California. And that's what we'd expect more to see along the lines of weather. Um, not so much that southerly tropical plume that was brought in, uh, but this would be more typical where we have low pressure in the Gulf than guiding some of its own moisture down. Not a whole lot of moisture though that it'd be tapping into. It would have to guide its own from its own weather front, so you got to see how that plays out. As far as the surf is concerned from that, we can see from that area of low pressure that was sitting there uh, south of the Gulf, we can see that that's also starting to swirl up some fetch. Yeah, but it's not a whole lot. You can see it kind of falls apart. And if we watch what happens too, keep your eye on here on the Bering Sea, you can see that yeah, there's a storm there, but it wants to kind of stay in that region until we get that low pressure that starts diving south. And this is then the swell maker that would result in about the 13th, 14th. But the problem once again is that it's not guided directly to the east to give the west coast any swell. So it wants to go south first and then eventually by the time it would make a turn toward us in that other lower leg of the jet, it would lose a lot of energy. So you got to see how that does. And of course, this is a hope and a prayer on a long range model that there would be some type of reform off the northern coast. Got to see what happens with that. So if we take a look at then the bigger picture in the Western Pacific and why this is the bad news portion of this forecast, even though we've got a pattern shift that could be conducive for rain, it can start dropping storms down from the Arctic to send a surf. Watch what happens. We normally want storms to come off of Japan over here in the Western Pacific and follow the jet stream along. But instead, because that high pressure is now blocking in that region, it doesn't allow any of them to get far at all. It starts sending them right up to Kamchatka. That's this little guy, Peninsula, sitting right off there. And then eventually they go into the Bering Sea. So we're entirely reliant now, like this guy just went into the Bering Sea, we're entirely reliant on the idea that this pattern shift would guide storms off of the Arctic down to us. So not your typical winter type pattern, but better than a complete blocking pattern overall. As far as the Southern Hemisphere is concerned, there's good news coming from this region. And of course, we're starting to get closer to that in a couple months where we're going to start seeing more swells. We're starting to see energy show up on the buoys now from a whole series of uh, storms that have been breaking off Antarctica and falling around the jet stream. As you move the models forward in time, there's actually some activity that starts lighting up here and there, but none of these storms are really moving north enough. This one over here that's uh, east of Pitcairn moving toward uh, Chile um, isn't really uh, a benefit for us. Us, but these are signs of hope, and there's more on that as well. So right now, the one thing that can work well for a southern hemisphere uh, swell season is to have a La Nina. And we're in somewhat of a La Nina right now. If we were in El Nino, then the jet stream would be very strong around Antarctica, wouldn't allow a lot of storms to drift northward. If we were in El Nino, then of course the tropical waters would be warmer, we could get hurricane swell. So it actually doesn't look too bad the way that we're seeing this moderate kind of phase of La Nina with this cold water off here in the eastern equatorial Pacific. We're in more of what you consider 
considered possibly a more normal type of year. Look at the uh, Western Pacific has a fair amount of warm water, but it's not extremely abnormally warm. So not a lot of like variance and differential going across the entire Pacific. So not all hope is lost then when it comes to the influence of the Southern Hemisphere jet stream around Antarctica to send swells our way. So looking at La Nina further, we can see that there's probably a possibility it will stay in a weak La Nina state for a while. And even as we get into uh, late 2018, when we'd start approaching the winter of uh, 2018 into 19, then barely uh, a reach toward El Nino. Now, that's not all bad news. If we can stay in a neutral uh, season, a neutral year that doesn't go to La Nina or El Nino either way, then there's actually a possibility, strong possibility for moderate swells. The thing that was really killing us this winter is that we were in this La Nina. You can see it dip down here quite a bit, and that had that blocking high pressure system. There's some outliers here that show a severe La Nina, and I think some math went out of control on that particular model run, but the mean actually actually shows uh, that we would actually see somewhat of an influence out of La Nina uh, later in the year. So this isn't bad news at all then for the summertime when we see July, where then the southern hemisphere jet stream can have a chance to relax and send storms our way. To show you what I'm talking about, this is a southern hemisphere jet stream right now as we look at it. And uh, you can see that if you start getting into the yellow and reds, those are really strong winds. And also, if it's very strong, you tend not to have a lot of undulations um, like we're starting to see. So as we move the models forward in time, we can see a lot of undulations. We don't see a whole lot of yellow, a lot of red. So not a whole lot of real strong um, and uh, the uh, Antarctic jet stream winds. So not too bad. It starts breaking apart quite a bit too. And, and these are all signs of an approach approaching spring that's not influenced by El Nino, but one that could eventually start sending southern hemisphere swells to Southern California. So that's how things are looking right now. We definitely have in the short term some rain, very good possibility of it coming our way this weekend. And uh, that's gonna be a severe concern when we come to Montecito and some of the other burn scar areas uh, because we've got a lot of tropical moisture coming in. And sometimes those dynamics can mean higher rain rates. We gotta see how that plays out. But nothing's a slam dunk when we talk about little pieces and blobs of moisture breaking off of a greater uh, tropical moisture plume to make an atmospheric river storm, which this really isn't really panning out to be so far, but still rain does look to be on the horizon. As far as surf is concerned, that same type of pattern shift is now more conducive to bring something our way, but nothing like we'd see epic winter like because even though high pressure was blocking in the Gulf has now moved to the Western Pacific, it's blocking those Western Pacific storms from making it anywhere near us. But we have a better chance now to see storms dropping down from the Arctic, which then can give us uh, some surf, can gain strength and move our way. And it looks like that pattern shift may be in place for a while. So it could be that March starts seeing some very moderate uh, Northwest swells and around California, nothing epic, but at least not flat and possibly less wind swell. But we've got to see how weather reacts with that too, because now that high pressure block system isn't in place, there's now a window of opportunity that opens up for storms to now get closer to the west coast. When we look forward toward then the southern hemisphere swell season coming up, as we start getting out of spring, those things are starting to look very positive right now. As long as we can stay in a moderate La Nina, things then become more conducive to a lot more storm formation off Antarctica that can drift northward because the jet stream in that region wouldn't be quite as strong. We're not looking at a lot of hurricane activity though right now because we've got that cold water off the uh, waters of the equatorial Pacific. So that's not really conducive to a lot of hurricane swells. So it looks like this spring and into summer, the primary swell of opportunity will be from the Southern Hemisphere. And it does have potential to give us something definitely surf worthy over the summer months. Well, I hope this is very useful to you and that you've got some out of this as well. You can follow my forecasts on surfer.com. And also, if you did like this video and you want to see more of it, you can subscribe to this YouTube channel. It won't cost you anything. And as soon as one of these videos is posted, you'll be the first to know. Thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, take care, be safe, and smile in the lineup.